Of all the CO2 that humans are emitting to the atmosphere, about half is being absorbed by the land and the oceans. To better understand the processes that control carbon emission and uptake, NASA is working to develop realistic models that describe how carbon moves between the atmosphere, land, and oceans. We combine a wealth of satellite data with a description of physical processes that control the carbon cycle, a whole lot of math and computer power, in order to better understand how carbon is changing both today and in the future. The Earth is a complex system, and scientists are continually investigating the intricate workings of our home planet. Part of what makes the Earth so unique is its climate. Many scientists are concerned that Earth's climate is changing at an unprecedented rate. How do scientists study how warm the planet is? Here's a look at the tools NASA scientists use to take Earth's temperature. Models are powerful tools for understanding Earth's complex systems. To create a model, scientists must first characterize a system by identifying the processes that govern its evolution. Those processes are represented by equations and are solved on powerful computers. Hi, this is Bill Putman. I'm a climate scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. What you're looking at is a supercomputer model of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. The visualization compresses one year of data into a few minutes. Carbon dioxide is the most important greenhouse gas affected by human activity. About half of the carbon dioxide emitted from fossil fuel combustion remains in the atmosphere while the other half is absorbed by natural land and ocean reservoirs. In the Northern Hemisphere, we see the highest concentrations are focused around major emission sources over North America, Europe, and Asia. Notice how the gas doesn't stay in one place. The dispersion of carbon dioxide is controlled by the large-scale weather patterns within the global circulation. During spring and summer in the Northern Hemisphere, plants absorb a substantial amount of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, thus removing some of the gas from the atmosphere. 
We see this change in the model as the red and purple colors start to fade. Meanwhile, in the southern hemisphere, we see the release of another pollutant, carbon monoxide. This is a gas that's both harmful to the environment and to humans. During the summer months, plumes of carbon monoxide stream from fires in Africa, South America, and Australia, contributing to high concentrations in the atmosphere. Notice how these emissions are also transported by winds to other parts of the world. As summer transitions to fall and plant photosynthesis decreases, carbon dioxide begins to accumulate in the atmosphere. Although this change is expected, we're seeing higher concentrations of carbon dioxide accumulate in the atmosphere each year. This is contributing to the long-term trend of rising global temperature. The Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2, or OCO2, will be the first NASA satellite mission to provide a global view of carbon dioxide. OCO2 observations and atmospheric models like GEOS-5 will work closely together to better understand both human emissions and natural fluxes of carbon dioxide. This will help guide climate models toward more reliable predictions of future conditions across the globe. A new NASA study predicts that by the end of the 21st century, the American Southwest and Great Plains are likely to experience longer and more severe droughts than at any other time in the last thousand years. So recent droughts such as the ongoing drought in California or in the Southwest, or even historical droughts such as the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, these are naturally occurring droughts that typically last several years or sometimes almost a decade. In our projections, what we're seeing is that with climate change, many of these types of droughts will likely last for 20, 30, sometimes even 40 years, even exceeding the duration of the long-term intense mega droughts that characterize the really arid time period known as the medieval climate anomaly. So how can we peer into the planet's future? Researchers combine natural observations and harness the processing capabilities of powerful supercomputers. The scientists looked at a thousand years of tree ring data and compare those records with soil moisture data from 17 different climate models in order to extend this drought information into the future. The models all show a drier world thanks to increased temperatures from human-induced climate change. But these computer simulations, these climate models, really represent our best understanding of the physics and the workings of the climate system. They're tested extensively against observations, and at the end of the day, if we want to investigate future climate, they are really the only tool that we have to use. How bad these droughts are likely to get has a lot to do with how much greenhouse gas emissions humans generate in coming years. Scientists looked at two different possibilities. First, a business-as-usual scenario where worldwide greenhouse gas emissions continue on their current course. In this case, the future risk of lengthy droughts rises to 80%. Alternatively, if the world were to take aggressive actions to reduce emissions, the models still show drying but the trends will be less severe. In either scenario, droughts could potentially have major impacts in a region already facing water management concerns. These droughts really represent events that nobody in the history of the United States has ever had to deal with. And so even in the modern era, droughts such as the ongoing droughts in California and the Southwest, these normal droughts act as major stresses on water resources in the region. 
So we expect that with these much longer droughts, it's going to be even more impactful and cause even more problems for agriculture and ecosystems in the region.